Hello everyone. Today I am in the city of Ontario. I, I am in downtown Ontario and I am at an incubator um, that hosts fourth sector innovation. Now, the event that uh, the city of Ontario is hosting today is called the Idea Exchange. Now, the purpose of the Idea Exchange is to foster innovation, design and entrepreneurship. So this is um, a building that's owned by the city of Ontario and events like these um, where uh, business owners or those that are interested in tech or a startup will have a place to uh, come get mentorship and be able to learn how the city of Ontario can help support their business. So this is not uh, just open to um, Ontario residents, but to uh, the rest of the startup community um, here in the city of Ontario. So the event is about to take place and uh, today is a start up pitch session. So I'll be um, showing you a few minutes of the session that's about to take place. Um, city's executive staff and our city council. Um, I would like to take a moment to recognize a few uh, executives here. Joining us today is our executive director of information technology, Colin Fernandez. We have um, our economic development director, Jennifer Hiramoto. We also have with us our innovation performance and audit director, Julie Chang. was born uh, from the city's goal of developing a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship with the business community. The city recognizes the importance of startups and entrepreneurs and feels it is imperative as a local municipality that we provide support and resources um, to individuals just like you guys. So again, thank you for coming out. Um, monthly, uh, monthly meetups um, are going to be um, put together via Eventbrite and um, meet up the website. Um, so above all, we hope that you guys can build significant connections and receive valuable resources supported by the city. Um, every meetup, we will be hearing from um, a three to five minute pitch from a local startup followed by a 25 uh, minute guest, uh, guest speaker presenting and they'll share stories of innovation uh, tech and entrepreneurship and also their success. So the rest of the evening will be just for networking and for you guys to build connections. So we appreciate again you guys coming out and now I would like to introduce Kevin Asorno. Kevin is, Kevin is the founder and CEO of the company Neoboard, an app to easily set up and manage study groups for colleges. Kevin's doctorate degree is in optical physics. He started the company Neoboard in 2019 as a result of his experience as an instructor, I'm sorry, instructor and interviews he conducted with program directors and students. So please welcome Kevin Zorno. All right, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. All right, awesome. Welcome everyone. How's everyone doing this afternoon? Great, thank you. Awesome. It's great to see all these gatherings. I've been tired of uh, si sitting in my room and, <laughs> and looking at the walls and watching a, a monitor all day. It's, uh, I'm just glad to see people around. I'm glad to see everyone exists. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much, guys, for being, on, uh, for, for, for being here today. I want to thank uh, Jennifer and I want to thank Carla because yeah. without them, this event would not have been possible. And I would love to thank uh, Kevin also for uh, helping organize this, uh, the arena here. So I'm very glad to see everyone here today. So as uh, there we go. Okay. So as I was saying, uh, as I was saying earlier. So I'm. Uh, my name is Kev Dr. Kevin Osorno. I'm the founder and CEO of Neoboard. I actually started this company because I wanted to help students like my my sister uh, through her college years. And actually, one of the biggest things that uh, that uh, that was a big struggle for my sister was uh, was the STEM sciences. So physics, chemistry, biology, I'm sure many of you guys can, how many of you guys had to struggle with those cl classes? Yeah, most of you, I'm sure. If you didn't raise your hand, you're either crazy like me <laughs> or, um, or you guys use Chegg all the time, I don't know. All right, so let me give you guys a little bit of a story, of, uh, a little bit of a story. Let's wind the clocks back to 2016. This is my sister and I took a photograph at Polly Pavilion over at UCLA. She graduated uh, with her degree in psychobiology. And uh, one of the biggest things that, sh that she struggled with during her early years was two classes, chemistry and biology. Those are the ones that 
she had a nightmare with. She just hated those classes. And so uh, my folks one day decided to call me over the phone and say, hey, Kevin, Alexa, which is my sister, needs some help with uh, chemistry. And I tell her, what do, what do you mean? I'm all the way in Riverside. I can't help her out. She's all the way at UCLA. She says, well, she's, the only, and she's very shy. You know, she, she, needs, she needs your help. And so I'm like, Ugh, okay, fine. All right, I'll help her out. I'll see what I can do. And of course, back then we tried technologies like uh, Skype, where I tried over the phone. And I don't know if you ever guys have tried doing tutoring over the phone. It's a nightmare. It's horrible. Good luck trying to explain uh, Newton's first law over the phone without having the ability to draw anything. It's, an, it's a nightmare. Nowadays we have Zoom, uh, but even then it's impossible to draw on those things. Well, anyway, one of those nights my sister says to me, uh, hey, Kevin, I need your help on Newton's first law. And so I say, okay, well, I'll help you out. And I start going over the two, uh, some, some to uh, topics with her. And then she gets, she, uh, I told her, does that make sense? No, it doesn't make any sense. I, I don't even know what you're pointing at because it's over the phone. And I, and I, t and I try again and I, I say, okay, let's do this over Skype. And so I tried the video, it's poor resolution and I'm trying to do this. I'm putting it at this angle and it's nothing's working. So. At one point, she, she gets impatient with me. She says, Kevin, you suck at tutoring. Like, you really are awful. I don't know why people keep coming back to you for help. And so I'm the, I'm the older one, right? I'm supposed to be the one holding my poise. And so, but I lose it there. I said, you know what, Alexa? Don't, bo don't bother me anymore. Go, go ask someone else for help. Go ask your friends. Like, don't bother me anymore. Like, if I, if I suck at tutoring, you know, I just go, I just blow up, I just blow up on her. And so she replies to me with one sentence. She says, Kevin, I have no one in the class to help me out. None of my friends are in the class. And so, I, and so me still being heated, I tell her, not my problem, go, go find someone. There, isn't there tutoring at UCLA? And she doesn't say anything. She's, she, she's dead silent. I did not think about it too much at the time, but I realized why. It's because she was too shy to ask people for help. She was a very shy person inside. And so I didn't think much of it at the time, but then later on, I, I said, uh, I, I then later on when I got into grad school and I started doing some teaching, I realized that there was always like two or three students in the class that were always forming study groups, and then the rest of the class that really wasn't that really wasn't participating and wasn't really doing much. And then when I got into grad school, I started talking to some professors, and then I realized that this was a bigger a bigger problem across the board when it comes to when it comes to education. This issue about uh, creating student engagement, this is a big problem for them. If you're in an in-person class, my sister would tell you the story. There's 300 students in the class. She's too shy to ask someone for help. She feels like she's bothering them. And that story gets repeated over and over again with at least a third, maybe half the class. So this became a problem and it became exacerbated during COVID because what are you gonna do on COVID to tutor, uh, to, to, get, uh, to get help from your, from your peers? Well, good luck reaching out to them on Facebook awkwardly and say, hey, can I, can I get some help, guys? Not gonna happen, that doesn't happen normally. And so it turns out when I started talking to some more program directors, I found that this was a bigger issue among engagement and about re uh, retention, which is keeping the students from one year to the next. Uh, it actually caused, it was one of the reasons why there was lower graduation rates for the two-year colleges. On average, two-year colleges in the U.S. have a graduation rate of only 28%. And so that was something I learned as I did some interviews. And so this was, and of course colleges, what are they concerned about? What is a good college concerned about? Anyone here concerned about? Uh, funding, yes. And how do they get funding if they're public ones? Tuition. Tuition, yes. So if students are dropping out from the course, guess what? They're losing money out of that. So they're concerned about funding. Or if they're not concerned about funding like the UCs, they're concerned about equity, diversity, and inclusion. And guess what? The students that are dropping out the most are minority students. My, uh, like uh, Blacks, Latinos like myself, we're dropping out like flies in, a lot in, in the two-year colleges. We have a solution. Educational researchers have been pushing this for years. Make cohort learning study groups a part of the classroom. But why haven't we done that? Well, how many students are at college? Anyone want to get a number, I guess? Yeah, exactly, a lot. On average, for two-year colleges, there could be as high as 13, 14,000 students in a college. So imagine trying to organize study groups for 13, 14,000 students. You can't really do this unless there's a software for it. And that's exactly what our company does. 
We are developing what's essentially a study session management system, an SSMS, not SMS like your texting systems, for universities to easily set up uh, quick and easy online study, uh, study groups. And we're also building in there an early warning detection system so that we detect students that are at risk of dropping out of the course. And so all we do is we organize uh, effective study groups for the students. We ask a quick questionnaire. I'll show you guys that in a little bit. We identify uh, engagement problems early uh, uh, through looking at uh, metrics on participation, student data, um, and looking at uh, you know are they facilitating conversations and messaging. We connect the groups with academic and faculty support based on those metrics. If the students are not participating very much, we direct them to the right resources on campus, whether it be a counselor, a tutor, you name it. And then lastly, the end result of that, what the colleges really care about is increasing student retention year after year, and ultimately these students going on to graduate. And that's essentially how our technology works. And very simply, all the instructor has to do is one thing. We make it very simple for the instructors. All they have to do is upload their roster. That is it. it has everything on there, their email addresses, the students, and we set up basically everything for them. And on the student side, all they have to do Fill out a little questionnaire. Sorry, there's no animation on this one here, but all they have to do is fill out a questionnaire. We set up for them their study session time. We get their Google Calendar. We get all the times the classes are starting, and we fill out, and we fill out the times for them, their study sessions at, at a certain time, and boom, all they have to do is show up to their study session weekly. Nice. From set, uh, half an hour, an hour, is how the program wants to be run. And on the instructor side, this is the most important one, we show the attendance and participation across the uh, across the entire classroom. If there are students that are struggling, we, they have a little button that, that says resolve, and we get send them a little chat message saying, hey, uh, if you need help with academic support, John is available at four o'clock today to help you out. It's that easy, guys. We make it that simple for the colleges. And so we don't do, we're not working on this alone. We have an awesome team helping us out. We have the, we have the, the awesome guys at Excite down in, in Riverside. We have the Wayfinder team at UCI helping us out. We have people on our board that are on AWS. We have our instructional designer, from, uh, Jeffrey Schwartz from Loyola, who's actually uh, one, of the, one of the great uh, masterminds of, uh, of Blackboard at the time. And we have this awesome team who's helping us out establish our first sales and our first pilots down in San Diego as well. And so I all I, I and so to everyone here I just have a quick ask of everyone if anyone knows any STEM instructors who might benefit from this technology we'd be we'd love to sit down and have a conversation with them. We're also looking for some edtech founders right now to help us with a little bit about our finances and start helping us with the process of raising money and later on we're also looking for some investors who could help us we're, we we're going to be trying to gather some some uh, investment money over the next year or so. So if you know any investors, you'd love to start having conversations with them this time. So yeah, that's a little bit about myself. And that's all I have for you guys today. If you guys have any questions, um, I will be around networking later on during the, during the day. So I'll be here, guys. Thank you very much. Woo!